Hello once again everybody and welcome to installment 4 in my electronics tutorial series. Now what we're doing here is resistors and I've called it resistors part 1 just due to the fact that I wouldn't be able to cover, cover everything in this first little segment. So stay tuned for more on resistors. What I specifically want to cover here is resistors in series and then resistors in parallel. We'll start with series. So let's go right back to our simple circuit consisting of a power supply and a resistor. We might have one volt and one K ohm or 1000 ohms. If we were to work out the current in this circuit we know that current is voltage divided by resistance. In this case it's one volt and one K. Let's punch that in. One volt divided by one K we get one times ten to the negative three. One milliamp. Now I should point out um, at this stage if you haven't gone through the first three tutorials it'll probably be a good idea to do that now and then come back to this. Alright, so one milliamp, that's, that's all well and good. So the current, all these electrons, have to start from the negative terminal of this power supply. They want to make it through the circuit to the positive terminal. This resistor is going to slow down these electrons. So the resistance, sorry, the um, electrons or the current has to flow through this resistance, which is opposing this current flow. So, if you imagine we had the same sort of circuit, but now connected an extra resistor in series and make it 1K again. What do you think might happen to the current flow? Well, if we just visualize this, again, these electrons want to start from the negative terminal, work their way around to positive. The electrons have to flow through this 1K resistor and this 1K resistor in order to get to this side. So it would make sense that we've added or we've increased the resistance by connecting two in series or connecting them one after the other. So in a series circuit RT or total resistance just equals R1 plus R2. If you've got more than two then it would be plus R3 plus R4 and so on. So for this circuit, if we call this R1 and this R2, we would have 1K plus 1K, and we don't really need to do that on the calculator, that's just 2K. So as far as this power supply is concerned, it actually sees a total resistance of 2K. So let's work out current. Current equals voltage divided by resistance. Still 1 volt. However, our resistance has doubled to 2K. We'll punch that in. 1 divided by 2K. And we now get 500 microamps, or 500 times 10 to the negative 6. If we added an extra resistor, so we had a third, the total resistance would now be 3K. The current would go down again to about 333 microamps. So in our circuit here, we've got 2K of resistance total. We've got 1K in series with 1K, which gives us 2K total. So as far as this power supply is concerned, it's got 2K ohms of resistance connected to it. That gives us 500 microamps of current. Now previously we've just been dealing with one resistor. The full power supply voltage was dropped across that resistor. Now we've got two resistors. Between this point and this point is the full one volt. So if we were to check between this point and this point, there would not actually be that full one volt because some will get dropped on here and some will get dropped on here. It has to share this full one volt. So let's figure out how we can uh, get the voltage drop of each of these. It'll be handy to write this up again. 
So remember our Ohm's law little triangle. So what we want to find is the voltage of resistor 1 and then we want to find the voltage of resistor 2. Since they're both the same value of resistance they'll actually have exactly the same. But we'll do it this way first. So if we want to find voltage it's current multiplied by resistance. We've already found that there is 500 microamps flowing in this circuit. R1 is 1k so it's 500,000, sorry, it's 500 microamps times 1k. Punch that in. And we get 500 times 10 to the negative 3, which is 500 millivolts. Or you could write it as 0 0.5 volts, half a volt. So, it would stand to reason that R2 would be exactly the same. Same amount of current flow, because it's a series circuit. Same resistance value. So it makes sense that it's going to be the same voltage drop. So, we've got one volt total. We've got two resistors that will share this voltage. Since they're the same value, it makes sense that they would get each get half of the 1 volt. We've just proven that using Ohm's law. So to recap, resistance will increase when resistors are added in a series circuit. Therefore, current will decrease. Since we now have more than one resistor in the circuit, each resistor will have to share the full power supply voltage between them. All voltage drops added together will equal the power supply voltage. Now let's move on to resistors in parallel. We'll go back to our first circuit with one resistor. Let's keep the same values, 1 volt, 1k. So we know that current starts off from the negative terminal and wants to move around to the positive. In this case it has to go through this resistor we found that 1 volt, 1k, we would get 1 milliamp of current flow. So, resistors in parallel, um, we're actually going to find that the resistance decreases when you add resistors in parallel. Let's have a look at why that happens. Let's add another resistor of exactly the same value, 1k. Still 1 volt, Here's our original 1K resistor, which I'll call R1. And here's R2, which is our added resistor. So picture yourself at a supermarket, and you're waiting at the checkout. Let's just say there's one checkout open. There's all these people lined up trying to get through this checkout. It's going to take quite a bit of time to get all these people through. It would be a lot quicker if they opened up another checkout. So this is what we're doing here. We've got the same amount of people that want to get through, but now there's two checkouts open. So some will go this way, and some will go this way. Similarly with current, that's what current's going to do. It'll start out at the negative terminal. It'll start to come down across to the right, and it's got this junction. Some current will flow up through this way, and some will take this path up through this way. It will keep coming around and they will both recombine at this junction and the full amount of current will then go onto the positive terminal. So by adding resistors in parallel, so the more we add, the more current paths we have, which means the resistance seems to be less or the resistance decreases. When we were dealing with series resistors, we found that the resistance increases and the formula to find the total resistance was R1 plus R2 plus R3 plus however many resistors we had. In parallel, we actually use what's known as the reciprocal method. So, the total resistance RT equals 1 
over 1 on R1 plus 1 on R2 and if we've got more it would be plus 1 on R3 plus 1 on R4 and so forth. So let's do this. R1 is 1k R2 is also 1k. So this is our formula. There are a number of ways to punch this into the calculator. Um, I'll just do it my method because um, that's just the way I'm used to. I'll do this part last. So I'll do all of these. So I'll go bracket 1 divided by 1k bracket plus another bracket 1 divided by 1k close bracket and I get 2 times 10 to the negative 3. So I've just done this part of the formula. So now I want to do 1 over what I just found. So I do 1 divided by the answer. And I get 500 times 10 to the 0. Or just 500. So I get 500 ohms. So as far as this power supply is concerned, the resistance connected to it is 500 ohms. So now having found that the total resistance is 500 ohms, how much current will we get total in this circuit? Well, that's quite easy. Let's draw up our little triangle again. Current is voltage over resistance. The total voltage is 1 volt. So I'm going to write IT, which is total current, equals voltage, 1 volt, over the total resistance. Remember, RT is now 500 ohms. Let's put that in. And we get 2 times 10 to the negative 3, which is 2 milliamps. So our total current or starting right at our start point here and going down is 2 milliamps. We come down across that 2 milliamps will split up here. We'll find that 1 milliamp will go that way and 1 milliamp will go this way. This 1 milliamp will now recombine with this 1 milliamp to give us again 2 milliamps to the positive terminal. So let's, um, let's have a look at and see if we can find the individual currents through here. So I'll just halve this. Now let's find the current through R1. In order to find current, it's the voltage divided by the resistance. We're just concerned with R1 this time. So what's the voltage across R1? Well, we've got a 1 volt battery directly connected across R1. So there must be 1 volt. What's the resistance of R1? It's 1K. Put that into the calculator. And we get 1 times 10 to the negative 3. That's 1 milliamp. So the current flow up through here is 1 milliamp. Let's do R2. Again, 1 volt because the battery is directly connected across the resistor, exactly like this one is connected. So it's 1 volt, it's still a 1K resistor, it'll be exactly the same. So we've just found there will be 1 milliamp through here, 1 milliamp through here. It makes sense because we found that the total current is 2. So we start with 2, we split. 1 will go that way, 1 will go that way, recombine, and we'll have 2 again going to the positive end of the power supply. And I guess that's about it for um, your parallel. So I guess the key things to remember is that in series you're actually increasing the resistance because the current has still only got one current path but now it's going through um, more resistance. In parallel you've actually opened up more current paths. So instead of only being able to go this way, the current can go this way or it can go this way if we had another resistor, it could also go this way. The more resistors you add in parallel, the less your total resistance. So to recap, 
resistors connected in parallel actually reduce the total circuit resistance. This is because it opens up extra paths for the current to take. The total circuit current equals all of the separate branch currents added together. You've been watching another Retro Brad video. Be sure to check out and subscribe to my channel for more electronic projects, hacks, how-to videos and tutorials. God bless.